What do gym teachers dream of when they take a gym teacher snooze? Do they dream of being famous? But never follow through, which makes them feel blue. But now we've created a new podcast. You're going to question if your kids are safe in our class. And then we're trying to brighten your day. And you're going to hang on every word that we say. Ryan Ray, it's a gym teacher dreams podcast. And if you listen and you like what you hear, well then please tell someone else. All right, welcome back to another episode of Gym Teacher Dreams Podcast. I am Ray. I am Ryan. And uh, this, I believe, is our fourth episode, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about music. Yes, we are. We have, once again, we have a fun segment at the end. We're going to talk a little bit about our roots for what, what kind of music we enjoyed and maybe why. But before that, we've got to talk a little bit about, you know, how's the day or anything uh, that we have to add from earlier episodes. Yeah. Um, how was your day first? My day was good. Did Kids you? are, yeah, I, I did not have, there's one kid, but once again, I'm going to get him into shape. You know, there's okay. one class that also that causes a little trouble, but Life is good. Life is, Life good. is good. I am winning today. You talked about winning today. Yeah. I am winning a lot more days now, and it is awesome. I was gonna ask. I didn't want. I didn't want to jinx it because there's a couple hours left in the day. But uh, I was gonna ask if you won the day. I agree. I think I, I definitely won the day so far. A um, little help by a friend. I'll give a shout out to Darcy Didio, nicknamed D Plus. She, uh, you know, she's into that. Uh, is it aromatherapy? And she yeah. set me up with uh, some stress relief roll-on stuff um and I, I do believe it may have helped today so shout out to her for helping me win the day but uh you know i i'll tell you a little story like you i think my classes are pretty good this year uh you know we have some challenging groups within the middle school but uh, i feel like i've kind of uh avoided them uh by way of scheduling thank you to the administration that schedules but uh um, today, there was a situation in a PE class. You know, a couple episodes ago, you were talking about safety in the classroom, right? You know, keeping a safe environment and, you know, kind of dovetailed into, you know, do PE teachers get, you know, a little active in class, you know, maybe uh, help with the, you know, getting abouts in a kickball game, you know, we call it pegging, right? Well, I did. I had one opportunity today. I probably had, like, a lot of opportunities, but... I don't just, uh, you know, throw balls around. I don't have the arm for that, and I'm a little old. But uh, every now and again, I feel like my chances are pretty good, and I've warmed up well, and uh, I'll let her rip. So there was a student, seventh grade student, middle of the day. Wait a minute. I have not heard this story, but I think I know where it's going. Okay. Is is it a certain kid that lives in my house? That's right. It is. Oh, this is Uh getting better. All right, go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the student, you know, taking a little lead off of first base. We're playing four-corner Which kickball. is illegal. It, it is illegal, but, you know, sometimes we let it go because we know those kids are, like, uh, tempting fate and they almost want to get outs, you know. So, again, I talk about me pitching as a gym teacher is to control the pace of the game. You know, if we need a couple outs, you know, if it's a long inning, I can manufacture those outs. You know, I can help the kids make outs and in this situation i did wait a minute wait a minute yeah did you say you helped the kids make outs or make out <laughs> make outs okay yeah i don't right. help the kids with that other part that's no a different thing. podcast i will be solo i think you <laughs> or a special guest i will not be present for that <laughs> anyway so the students leading off and it's uh you know i mean can we just throw it out there it's uh ryan piccolotti jr we'll say and uh you know, I kind of give him the look and maybe the arm motion of, hey, I'll throw it, I'll throw it, and he didn't budge. He didn't budge, so he was almost tempting me. So, I don't know, again, this is one of my little secrets. I shouldn't share this with the podcast, but, I mean, why are you going public with a podcast if you're keeping secrets, right? True. 
I don't throw many fast. Preston and I are definitely going to have to have a little chat, okay, that he cannot slow. allow you to hit. Yeah, you know, so, uh, um, student, so we're going to have to work on some agility. Ball coming mm-hmm. right at him. Work on, you know, but like a little movie. Yeah, start so throwing wrenches and yeah. stuff at him because that just can't happen. He has to, he has to assume that your ball is going to move. You know, crafty lefty is going to tail away from him, or you're going to cut it. So that's just, that's just not very good by a dad preparing him, preparing him for the challenge. And it, it got him in the left right. knee. And Maybe I mean, I'm just here, you know, lay my cards on the table. Barely here. higher. Barely, I try and it was a good shot. You know, Preston, a better one for one on this young season. I've picked up early I think that's on. Good Preston start wasn't in my school PE class, class last year. He wasn't. We in my offered PE Preston to come on the podcast, and he did he decline. But I picked decline. up early. Yeah, I think he's jumping. You know, I mean, you agree you're a jumper? Yeah, I jumped up early. Yeah, yeah, that is true. So, like Major League Baseball, it's all about adjusting and readjusting. The analytics. The analytics. Analytics. I've noticed he's a jumper, so you might want to break him of that. Do we give him a secondary move? You know. Yeah, you gotta have your primary and secondary. Yeah. Just food for thought. All right. Mm-hmm. So I have nothing interesting at school. Kids kids are, in, you know, kids are kids. Yeah. So I'll have some stories down the road. But right now, we're going to get into some music, kind of our roots of our interest and in how, where we became, where we went. And then we do have a segment with uh, music today. Mm-hmm. So I'll go first here where yeah, I started. The first part of is my parents. My dad is a very good singer. I've heard that. Yes. I haven't heard him yet. Ooh, I need to get out there and check it out. Maybe I should have him you know, sing Don't they do a song. concert every year? Not anymore. No. The Roadrunners. He was part of the Roadrunners. Road yeah. And they were good. And he used to do a festival every year. I, admit, I guess I never yep, made it. Yep, Fireman's Ball. Yep. Okay? Yep. And everyone came. You know, Obviously, one, to donate you know, money for the firefighting because that's pretty important. Good cause. And two, to hear Roadrunners. Yeah. My dad sing, Hang on, Sloopy. So, uh, just the picture that is being painted in my head. The Roadrunners were to northwestern Illinois, as backcountry roads are to, like, Sycamore to Calvary area? <clears throat> I think so. Okay. I think so. All right. So, yeah. I got a good picture. Yes. So my dad's a good singer. So, obviously, we always he would sing for us and sing some of his some classics. But they listened to a lot of, like, the Monkees. That's the only, yeah. The Monkees was the biggest one that I really remember back, back the in the day. Underrated. The Monkey, I think. I Yeah. Not a good song. Yeah. Yeah, and then we watched the show. Yeah. Yeah, the show, of course, you watch the show. Yeah. Yeah. So, how about you? Initial roots. <clears throat> um, initial roots. Holy cow. So, my dad, a little bit of a hippie, I would say. Big Beatles fan. Beatles. It's ironic that you bring this up because uh, we recently were going through some of his like record collection and things like that. And, uh, uh, yeah, just a uh, big Beatles fan. Um, like uh, old the older rock and roll, um, uh, I'm I'm drawing a blank. But yeah, we had records. You know, we'd listen to those. We'd break them out. Um, and my mom was more like old country, Conway Twitty stuff like that. Um, so I guess that was what I was like introduced to. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know. Yeah, when I started liking music in, say, middle school, like developing my own likes and interests. Um, like I said, Debbie Gibson, last podcast wasn't that. I said, uh, <clears throat> you know, big fan of Debbie Gibson and stuff like that. And uh, Paula Abdul. Opposite, you know? Opposites attract. Yeah, man, I can see that. Uh, that video, right? Video, yeah. Yep, the yep. cat, the, like, the drawn in cat or whatever. That was ahead of its time. I, yes. <clears throat> anyway, I. I yeah. I kind of joined, kind of similar is, you know, all of a sudden I went to, maybe because I didn't talk very fast. Oh. <laughs> so I, for some reason, I, I went to the slow songs. Maybe because I'm a sensitive guy, sensitive yeah, 90s I guy. that's what it was. You I know, think. but also I think some of it is I just didn't talk very fast. So some of the songs that were fast, I couldn't, I couldn't keep up. Did you ever I, try karaoke to regulators? No. No, that one's fast. But, Faster than you think. But remember, I did write a rap song to regulate I it, and I, I had to practice a lot. Yeah. But anyway, so I started with the slow songs of the 80s and 90s. Yeah. And then I went to the slow R&B songs, End of the Road, you yeah. know, The Boys, The Men, you know, Come Trey Lance, all, you know, all those guys. TV. Yes. Yeah. Those were my jams. And then when I got to college, my roommate was country, and so I started listening to country, and that's where I'm at. So I enjoy all mm-hmm. types of music. You know, once again, yeah. I, you know, I, I played in a band, and I enjoy, you know. Third seat. Second, Second in my senior year. Senior year. Okay. okay. 
Trumpet? He's... Saxophone. I tell you Trombone. What, this might be the last time this dude and I ever have a podcast. You know, trumpets, uh, trumpets are kind of like a, a certain coach of mine. I, I disliked them because they got all the good parts. Okay. You know, and we were always the background is the alto sax. You are the alto sax. So I was the alto sax, yes. How did this not come up? I, the, the three weeks I was in band in fifth grade, I played the sax. I, I, oh, lots of funny stories here. Do you mind if I share? It's just uh, Sure. Remind me to come back to my music because I don't want my, the audience to think, oh, Debbie Gibson, Paul Abdul, I know this dude, right? No, it changed like you. And, tell us now. Well, I don't want to forget the story. Okay, tell the story, then go back. We got, so we got I was in band for like three weeks, okay? I couldn't cut it, right? Playing saxophone. And, you know, my parents, you know, got practice. We're talking about practice, right? It was like the... the I don't know if the, the teacher probably said I got practice. So my parents are like, yeah, go down, go down to your room and practice 20 minutes a day. That's what you're supposed to do. So that's what I'd do. But I was I, I couldn't read music. I didn't know the notes. I didn't know what I was doing. I was down there hammering away, just blowing on that thing, pushing buttons. And I always thought to myself, how do my parents not know that I'm practicing? Or how, how do they, you know, how do they not know that I'm pretending? Right? I, you know, whatever. So now I've married a music teacher, right? And I've attended over the years a lot of elementary music concerts. And a lot of those elementary music concerts are also band concerts. And I learned quickly how my parents didn't know that I wasn't really practicing. What I, the noise I was making in my basement for three weeks is exactly what I hear at those concerts for like fourth and fifth graders, you know? So that's kind of, kind of a funny story to me. Is like all of a sudden I got my answer. I was like enlightened. I'm like, that's how they didn't know. So anyway, the music. Now, I was kind of a little soft, you know, so I couldn't like like Metallica and stuff like that. You know, even Guns N' Roses was a little hard for me in middle school, you know. But uh, uh, Vanilla Ice, when he came out, you know, kind of the white rapper, that was, you know, I remember listening to that. In fact, you know, I, we, you know, one of my favorite memories of middle school is walking home and it's like every block that you pass, like a couple kids would veer off to the left and then the next block a couple would veer off to the right and it's like the further you went your your group and your posse kind of got thinner and thinned out i just i just still have warm fuzzies about that but uh we listened to uh to uh vanilla ice you know not just the the a side but also the b side on our walk home so that was one of my branches of music and then uh high school you know the alternative scene was getting pretty big you know so listen to that a little bit uh, rap, you know, I got, I went through a phase of like '90s rap, you know, uh, hip hop hooray and OPP and stuff like that. Uh, I did hit country a little bit when Garth was big and you know blowing up and whatnot. I, I did, I was a big Garth fan, and you know, even now I think the the new age country is really good. It's really strong right now with a lot of Garth type people, although they wouldn't want to hear themselves called Garth type peoples. But uh, so very similar to you. Just a wide variety. I could listen to just about anything. You know, people are like, oh, who's your favorite? Well, I don't know if I have a favorite. I just like songs, and they cross many genres. So that's my music. Yeah, I like all, almost all types, but yeah. for the most part, I've kind of settled on country. Yeah, Eric and, Church. Yep, Eric Church is my boy. Okay. Yeah. So with that, our segment today is with, once again, with Mr. Ray Borgman is Have You Ever... Okay. And I've used song lyrics to ask him. So I will ask I will ask him, have you ever using a song lyric? So, number one, are you ready for this? I'm ready, but this, I'm, I'm impressed by this. If this is going to fly the way I think it's going to, this is like upper level stuff. I would said I'd make time. All right, number one, yeah. have you ever trusted a big butt and a smile? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dang it. Yes. Maybe I'm currently trusting a big button a smile. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, honey. <laughs> All right. Number two. Yep. I'll I'll go I'll go change a little bit. Have you ever drove your Chevy to the levee? Phones got levee, don't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever drive? Called a dike. Yeah. It's a levee. Yeah. yeah. Um, no. I don't know that I've ever like driven a Chevy, you know. Uh I, I don't think we've yes, Chevy Lumina. That was when I first started driving. That was Preston. more. <clears throat> that was more Jake's ride. It was my mom's car, but uh, um, I, I think that counts. I've yes, done it. You did it. Okay, Chevy perfect. To perfect. The All right. Next one. Yep. And can Have I just you, add? Yeah. Dude, you're we're from the same area. 
You don't hang out at the Levy and Fulton. You hang out in Clinton on the dike, dude. That is true. But yeah. we just drove around Savannah. I never really. Yeah, you didn't Clinton. need to go anywhere else. Right. right. Sabula never hit over to Sabula. Nope. Okay. Nope. I didn't because yeah. once again I didn't do much wrong. Just ask my sisters. <laughs> okay. Next one. Have you ever brought sexy back? No. I don't think so. We might have a guest on and ask your wife if you ever brought sexy back. All right. All right. Next one. Have you ever gone hood sliding like Bo Duke? Hey, I don't even know the reference there. I don't think That's I know Jerks that. That's Jerks Bentley. Jerks Bentley. Yep. Yep. Hood sliding. Oh, I don't think I That's did. what I wanted to do too, see if you knew the songs that we were okay. that they were with too, but you know the other ones have been pretty Yeah, straightforward. Yes, yeah, I yes. think I knew those. Yes. Others. Um I think I was afraid to scratch like mom and dad's vehicle, and if I would not do that to my own, I don't think. But I've always wanted to hood slide like Bo Duke. Yeah, but I just don't think it would go well. I think a well. lot of young boys do want to. I, I so I, although I can't come up with like a time where I did, I know it's like been in my heart and my brain that I've wanted to. I've had the urge. I just don't know if I've ever done it. Yeah. I have not, but even like at school, you know, when you in the office they have the counter space. Yeah. I want to go hood sliding like Bo Duke on the counter. Like Ladies and I would love it. And not I just me, haven't. I just was. would not be able to do it. Yeah. I just I, I'm scared. Scared. Yes. Yeah. The next one. Yeah. Have you ever got busy in a Burger King bathroom? Never. Never. Never? Never. Okay. Yeah. Any I don't know. I'll go I'll stop yes. there. I'll stop there. Okay. Yep. Hmm, next one. Have you ever wished upon a star? Yeah, of course. Got any um, um, wishes you willing? Uh, I, I don't remember the wishes exactly. <laughs> it probably involved a young lady that's not in my life right now. Not a young lady, but, you know, I mean, you're a middle school or a high school. You're thinking, oh, I want to date that girl. The star shoots. You make the wish. I mean, I think that's how it normally happens, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. Okay. How about... Have you ever been too legit to quit? I spent about three good years being too legit to quit. That was our senior basketball kind of motto song. And it's still on YouTube. It was like the big thing during the state run of the 91 Fulton Steamers. You know, a big sign, too legit to quit. The too cheerleaders, legit. too legit That's to quit. A, yep, yep. That I do that the all the time. When I, I play that song, you know, sometimes, you know, at school, and, you know, mm -hmm. I hit the hand signals. We're yeah, too legit right. to quit. Yes. Hey, hey. All right, good. We're rolling now. Okay. Have you ever chased a waterfall? Figuratively or literally? I don't know. I just what do know. they mean when they say that? I never thought about it. Like, I always envisioned waterfall. Yeah. But now that you just said that, it must mean something other than waterfall. Don't go chasing waterfalls. Please like stick dreams? to... dreams? Like pipe dreams Maybe. or something? Maybe. Please stick to the rivers and the lakes that you're used to. That's why you didn't leave Savannah, I bet. You just stuck to the rivers and the lakes you knew. Well, How much trouble can you get in Sabula? I don't, I don't know if I follow um, that. Quite a bit. I'm gonna have to ask your sisters, but uh, <laughs> um, I'm sure I chased waterfalls. If waterfalls are dreams, aren't we chasing a dream right now? Yes, yes. Yeah. So I guess we are. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Next one. Yep. Have you ever kicked off your Sunday shoes? <laughs> yeah. About 15 minutes after church, I kick them off. You better believe it. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Have you ever had a country girl shake it for you? Hmm. That's Luke you know, Bryant. You know, yeah, I know that song. Okay. That song. Mm -hmm. Um, if my wife were here, I think she would call herself a country girl. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> um, my wife lived out in the country, and she is shaking for me all the time, baby, all the time. Awesome. Anyway. Okay. Have you ever had Have you ever had good advice that you just didn't take? Yes. Oh my goodness. Do I go into this? Um, <laughs> my ah, so, so you know, my wife and I we get married, and uh, I think we both wanted to have kids right away. And my, I mean, I love my kids. You know, Jonathan, don't think anything about this, but uh, don't read into it too much. But my dad encouraged me. He said, you know, don't enjoy marriage a little bit. You know, don't rush into having kids and starting a family just enjoy you and your wife you know we bought a house right away enjoy that lifestyle and she and i i think she would agree if she was sitting here we just felt like we had kind of lived actually we dated for you know a handful of years way longer than she wanted to if you ask her but uh um and we started a family right away we basically had a honeymoon baby it was 
we try well <laughs> we tried for a honeymoon baby and uh, it didn't happen that month but the next month we she got pregnant and uh, you know started family right away so that was if, I mean I love my kids they're great they're my life now but you know it maybe would have been nice to have a couple years where we just enjoyed each other and whatever but that time will come later because our kids I mean shoot it goes so fast I feel like they're almost out of the house now and then we'll enjoy that time together Yes, Raymond, it does go fast. So yeah. enjoy the time That's with right. your kids. That's right. two-thirds of the Yes, out yes. Of the and we all have not taken good advice. Yeah, you right. Know? And that's, you know, we all make mistakes. Yeah. No one's perfect. That is not, if you have not been to coachpick.hoops.com, <laughs> I have wrote a little bit about that. Perfect is not in my, in my vocabulary anymore. Yeah. I do not strive for perfection. Excellence is as far as I'll go. How okay? I've got a few more here. I see. I see the checks. Yes. Adding up. Have you ever sang songs in the rain? That's oh, a little yeah. bla- blaze of glory, you know. Blaze you know. of glory. Yeah. So yes, you sang songs in the rain. I'm sure I have. Yeah. Okay. I like a warm rain. Cold rain. I can't stay out there very long. That is true. Cold November rain. No, thank you. Ooh. You like what Ooh, I did there? Yeah. Yeah. See, he's starting to figure this out. <laughs> How about okay? I, I oh, should. Took me I should have. I should have gone this one before I asked the one before. I apologize, but hey, I forget. Hey, we're not striving for perfection. Okay. That is true. Okay. Have you ever waited on two pink lines? Ha. Huh. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it was. Oh man, I remember this happening. It was more. Yeah. I mean, obviously that story I just told. We were waiting on pink lines. And then our second baby, my wife thought she was pregnant, thought she was pregnant, whatever. And I didn't think, I guess my math skills weren't great or whatever. And, you know, she, I was half asleep and she's waking up and she's like, hey, look, look. I'm like, let me sleep. Look. <laughs> she shows me and we're pregnant again. All right. <laughs> that, awesome. Yeah, exactly. Let me sleep some more. Uh-huh. So that, I just, you saying that makes me remember that, but, uh. Anyway, yeah. Of course. All right, I got two more. I have one that I'm just going to wait because I just can't do it because I, I don't because I just don't know the exact word. I don't know if I have it. I have the wording of it right. right, so I'll wait on that one. Okay. But I got two more. One, have you ever been drunk on a plane? No. Okay. There was one time, Jake and I. I think it was the first time I ever flown. We were, uh, you know, they asked, "Would anybody move so this family can stay together?" Well, yeah, we'll move. So we moved, and they let us have drinks. I think this was bad. You know, it wasn't one drink. They're like, yeah, just let us know when you need a drink. So, I mean, we were, I, we didn't get real aggressive with it, but, uh, you know, we took advantage. But I, we weren't drunk. Of course, you know, it was a little younger. My tolerance yeah. was built way up at that point. So, uh, no, gave it the college try once, but never been drunk on a plane. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the last one, obviously. This- I was drinking Jack and Cokes back then. Yeah. Ooh. So. <laughs> Jack Daniels kick your ass, you know, because they can go to church. Twice. Yeah. I didn't know yeah. what it tastes like coming up, so. Whoa. Yeah. All right, last one. Yep. Have you ever been fishing in the dark? And you know this is with a lady friend. Oh, that you like I thought to you say. meant literally fishing. Right? I know, no, but you, the song, I, yes. I push the hours where it gets a little dark, but I'm scared of what might come out of the water, so I don't fish in the dark. But literally, so again, I guess I, oh, I'm so dumb. I never think of like what the real meaning of songs are. I just take them at face value. That meant something else. Okay, I get it. Um, so it's like outside, under the moonlight type fishing in yeah. the dark? You and me going fishing in the dark, laying on our backs and counting the stars? I don't... Uh, you're right. This, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, it is. That's it how is. dumb I am. Um, <laughs> never. I'm pretty sure I've never Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, that is all I have. Do you have any right now for me? We got a few minutes here. You got no, that you thought I, about? Hey, give me the pen. I'm gonna write some for <laughs> next time. I'm taking notes for next episode when I'm the captain and you're whatever. Sidekick. Sidekick. Well, I hope you enjoyed this one. Once again, it's a segment that I I had a lot of fun uh, preparing for, <laughs> and um, you know I, I hope you got some laughs along the way. But uh, this is Gym Teacher Dreams, as you see. And if you thought, if you check the title of our podcast and think it was going to be a lot about education, you were wrong. wrong. Okay, <laughs> it's about our dreams of making it big. And and uh, thank you for listening. And until the next one, we out of here.